Okay, I want to introduce next Lori Vertelny, who's also with the Human Interface Group in ATG. Come on up. <clears throat> Uh, Laurie's been working for the past several years on interfaces for computer-like things uh, that are a little smaller than what we're all used to dealing with, at least until now. Uh, now, there's a lot of interest in computers you interact with, with uh, <coughs> pens and stylus and, you know, in some cases even speech, uh, but particularly the ones with pen and stylus, the ones we've seen so far, don't seem to recognize uh, handwriting really well enough yet to make, well, make me want to use them for things like taking notes or, or, or writing a letter. They work. I must say they work pretty good for things like filling out forms and some of the vertical applications we've seen. But Laurie's been working on some pen-based prototypes that allow you to take notes in your own handwriting but still be able to find things and organize your notebook uh, better than the old paper and pencil method. <clears throat> uh, we hope this demo works. Actually, we tried this and I hope that, the, uh, that you can actually see enough of it to make it useful. We were going to show a videotape, but uh, we decided that the impact of actually a live demo would be a lot better. So, Laurie? Hey. Hi, can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you see what's on the screen? Give it a minute, let's take a second. <laughs> We've never tried to demonstrate something so small <laughs> on a 30-foot screen. <laughs> you see it? Okay. What I'm going to show you is a notebook computer, and what we're, what we're looking at is something that uh, was based on a lot of user input. We noticed that a lot of people who use computers now use uh, keyboards, and that's not necessarily appropriate in meeting situations. So what we wanted to do is provide them with a, a, no, a computer with the, that would give them um, sketching and annotation abilities. So I basically have a pen here, and I have a paper metaphor. Now let's pretend we're in a meeting and somebody gives me an assignment. I'm supposed to do some sketches by Friday. So let me just write into here, sketches, my hand's nervous, by Friday. And it's a very easy interface to just write my, my can you see that? OK, so now we move on. Once I write into my notebook, I'm going to want to flip pages to move from one play, page to the other. You can see now? Okay, so I wrote in here. I'm going to show you how I can write in here. Okay. <laughs> Actually, you can see if I press a little harder, I even get a thicker line. Ooh. <laughs> now, if I want to flip pages in my notebook, I use my finger, and I just grab an edge and flip. And it goes forward and backwards. But let's say I want to see several pages at a time, or sequentially. I can just flip a little faster. And when I see a page I want to stop at, I just press down with my finger. This is really nice because when you're using paper notebooks, people don't pay attention to that keyboard in the middle of a conversation. They, they don't know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> I could be doing homework or something. Okay. The next thing I do in the meeting is somebody says, well, gosh, do you have the budget that you've been working on? And since I've been working on it a lot, I want to have access to it really quickly. So I have something called an electronic paper clip. And I can mark any page in the notebook with a paper clip. And when I do, I just press on it. It'll take me directly to that page, so it's easy for me to find. And paper clips can be thrown away just by dragging them down. Or I can bring up another one just by pulling it back up. Now, let's say that somebody asked me about the, a phone number. And, and now I'm on the page that that phone number um, was on. And you notice here it is in my notebook. Now, there are times when you're going to want to take information that people give you during the meeting and catalog it somehow or label it so you can get back to it later on. And phone numbers are things that you usually do that with. So we have something at the bottom of the screen down here called a stamp dispenser. And what stamps are are labels for users to sort of quickly uh, grab uh, meaning and associate it with something on the page. For example, I may have a to-do stamp or a calendar stamp. And I have a phone number stamp in my uh, stamp well. So I can, be, I can pull a phone number stamp out and stick it on the page here next to the phone number. Now this is going to be useful later on when I want to turn on. I pull out the wrong stamp. But I can throw it away and do it again. And I keep doing it. One more time. Here we go. Right stamp. OK, so now this is going to become useful later on when I want to go find a, this phone number. What I can do is turn on the phone number 
filter. And what I do is come down to the stamp well, press on it. Wait a minute. Here we go. And now you notice that the stamp blinks. And that's to tell me the filter's on. But also, every time I start flipping pages, it goes to the next page in the notebook that happens to have that stamp on it. There may have been 10 pages between this page and that one, but it's narrowed down the search for me. Now I can continue to, to flip through these pages quickly, and you can see there are only pa three pages in this whole book that have that stamp on it. And when I'm done with the stamp, I can just simply drag it off the screen. OK. Now, there are times when you don't have to go searching through your notebook to find things, though. So you're going to want the computer to actually bring the information to you. And so we thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a tool for doing that? So for every stamp, there should be essentially a, a list view of, of the, those stamps in your notebook. So I have a stamp in my notebook for labeling uh, page titles. I call it my, my table of contents stamp. And what I can do is open up my table of contents list. And what it does is brings, brings forward into this, this uh, box here all of the objects that I've marked with that stamp. So it's nice because it gives me an overview of all the things in my notebook that have that stamp next to it. But above that, I can use this particular view to navigate directly to that page in the book just by pressing on it. So it's an additional way to get to a piece of information. Okay, finally, when we did, looked at users who use paper notebooks, we noticed that they like to organize their notebooks into different sections. And so we let people do that here in the electronic notebook as well. And you'll notice that I have a tab at the top of the screen here, and I'm currently in my notes section. But I may also have a section in my notebook called an inbox. And to go there, I just press on it. And okay, I've programmed this notebook so that when I connect it to a Macintosh, it brings in all my electronic mail and stuffs it into this section. So what I'm going to do now is open up a piece of mail. And here's the piece of mail that came from Apple Link earlier on during the day. Now, I may not be connected right now. Well, I'm not connected. Here's the mail. But when you bring in stuff from the outside world, such as Apple Link, you may have a problem because you didn't create it in your notebook. And it may be a little longer than the page in the notebook. So what I'm going to do is take the page and scroll it up with my hand. And you see, it continues to scroll until I stop it. OK, so the nice thing about this is that the computer knows I'm not writing, that I'm scrolling. And it knows when I'm flipping the pages. And it knows how to keep all those different actions um, separate. And as a user, it doesn't matter to me. That's how I want to interact with it. Now, let's say that we're in our meeting again. And everybody in the meeting decides they want a copy of this mail message. So what I can do is pull out my mail stamp. And it opens up into a dialogue. And basically, what I'm going to do now is program my notebook to take care of forwarding this mail to everybody in the meeting. So I have my Rolodex here. And I'm going to click on that. And since I con converse with the people in the meeting a lot, they're included in my Rolodex. And I'm just going to select them to send this mail message to them and close up my dialogue box. Now, you notice down here that my stamps changed to reflect the state saying that it's going to mail this to somebody later on when I eventually connect to the network. And I really like this because it makes me feel as if the task is complete, even though I'm not done. When I take my, Mac, my small computer back to my Macintosh, it'll complete it for me. OK, now I think there's one more thing I was supposed to show. Well, gosh, let me hit my remember, my remember stamp and see what it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, these are the people that helped build this notebook with me. That's it. Thank you.